It's like a walking around with chain mail on. Oh, your body feels heavy all the time. You get up in the morning and you don't know what you're going to be like. So it's a constant battle. Robert Gregory was first diagnosed with a rare genetic disease at 40 years old. Alcaptonuria is a condition which attacks the cartilage in the body and eventually turns the bones black. The disease is so rare that ignorance is its biggest barrier. Very few GPs know what to look for, so many suffer in silence. This film follows one man's fight to get his disease recognised. Uh, the disease um, itself is extremely rare and it's caused by a single enzyme deficiency. Um, and what this, this means is that people who, st who suffer from the disease, when they consume protein, um, it gets broken down. Um, but people with alcaptonuria are missing an enzyme in the breakdown pathway. When you've got this disease, you discreet an acid is called a homogenic acid, 2,000 times more than anybody else. Your, 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 your urine, your urine turns black. That blackness also goes inside the body and burns away the college, collagen and collagen in the body. I've had uh, two knees replaced. I've recently had hip replacements. I've got to have more surgery later on. I've got to have a shoulder. It's an autosomal recessive disorder. So that means that the parents each carry one bad copy of the gene, really, for it's a, an enzyme defect. Um, so they themselves are perfectly healthy and they don't know that they're carrying that disorder until they have an affected child and the chances of them having an affected child is actually only one in four. The joints are stiff all the time. His joints are getting burnt out all the time. reason for that, the acid is going into the joints and burning the tissue away, burning the cartilage away. So what happens? It affects your heart, the heart muscles are affected, it affects your kidneys because it, it attacks, you get kidney stones and, and stones in your bladder and prostate. It uh, affects all your joints, shoulders, you can't lift it. If I lift that up, that feels very, very heavy to me. There is a massive stigma surrounding the condition because of its links with inter-family breeding, but many cases have no connection to incest at all. It's more common in consanguineous families, as they call them, where you've married your cousin or you know somebody slightly more distantly related. If you're just reading about autosomal recessive disorders in general, it's not just AKU, so anything, even like cystic fibrosis, um, they do say that if you look at the families where it occurs, then the incidence of consanguineous marriage is a little bit higher than in the general population. When I went to and to get my knees done, I, I come out and I was looking around and I said, there's nothing, nobody knows anything about our Captain here. I started getting a message across, putting a message board on the message boards on the internet. It's not a new disease. It was found in the Egyptian mummies. So it's not a new disease. It's just no bees bothered with it. Robert didn't want others to suffer as he did. So he set up a support group to inform others of his condition. We're with a link for anybody who has alcatrinure in the world because it comes to the website and it's directed to me 
um, if anybody wants um, to join they fill in the questionnaire and we get that information directly to here and we send out information because you know they it's like they haven't heard of it so they want some advice from us so we provide advice really and send them out information um, the main part of our project really is to um, sort of educate the medical professions um, especially GPs when because the GPs don't know much about it the patients then feel a bit isolated because they don't know about it and the GPs don't know. So you're at an impasse really, nobody knows. Little research has been done on the disease because it is so rare. Robert wanted to work towards a treatment and maybe even a cure. So he organised the University of Liverpool to research our Captainoria. It, it's classed as an orphan disease and an orphan drug company of Sweden said there's not worth putting any research and development in it because it's only, if 50,000 people had the disease, they do something about it. If 5,000 got it, they won't bother, it's not worth a while. Our first vision is to find a treatment and to find one really soon um, that can then be, um, I suppose, made available to um, patients across the UK but also worldwide um, to help them to help them stop suffering from this terrible illness. People speak about a, a kind of a 10 year vision and I think you know 10 years is uh, a reasonable time frame but the way the research is going at the moment is it's growing exponentially and you know maybe 10 years is 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 you know is overestimating I think maybe sooner you know I would hope five six years down the line that we'd be looking at something that would be extremely effective and, and hoping to make a difference for, for people who suffer from our capsinuria. All my time was spent trying to get a cure for our capsinuria, get the message out there. When I go, when I, I die, I'm set the, a setting of a foundation the Al Captain Foundation of Europe in my name and the house is going to be sold. Everything goes over to the charity. It's a disease not going away. It's there. It's going to get worse. And it, we it can find the cure for Al Captain It took me 10 years to persuade the University of Liverpool uh, to, to, to go along with Brown. They said to me, uh, we've got no money, I can't get any money. I said, I'll get the money. I'll get the money. i got the money. Uh, every time I went in to meetings with the professors, he used to say, how many people in the country have got disease? He said to me, one in a million, that will make 60, 60 in this country. That's it's more than that now. We found more than that. So all, all I said to the professors, I've done everything I, I promised them. I promised them I, I'd get them money, money for it. I promise them there's people out there we don't know anything about and I promise them uh, I set up a foundation so they can continue work on it when I go. People who suffer from our captain are, are great role models. I think they um, they they don't uh, they don't go about and get recognised very much. Um, you know, they're, they're very quiet individuals and I, th I think they, they're they overlooked by a lot of people. A lot of people don't know what their, their disease is, the suffering and the, the things that they go through. It's a, just normal for me. I don't want to be nominated for all sorts of awards. I'm not interested in awards. Uh, all that I want is to continue the work. I told the, uh, the professors, I said, all I want is to get a cure for AKU. That's all I'm interested in. But every morning I get up, I'm still breathing. I'm optimistic.